Let me lay it out for you. I'll lay it out. Teams that are bad, it's usually the result of bad management, which is the result of bad ownership. So let me just lay out how the, the Jets have gotten themselves into this position. So Tannenbaum used to be the GM. His coach was Rex Ryan. So they bring in John Idzik, but they make Idzik keep Rex Ryan. He didn't want Rex Ryan. So he was undercutting Rex Ryan, trying to get cap space, and then he was going to be able to choose his own coach. They bang him after two years because his first two drafts weren't good. But what he did do was he had a lot of cap space. He created the cap space. Then they bring in a new GM, Mike McCagnan. And rather, have, rather than have Mike McCagnan choose the coach that he wanted, they independently hired Todd Bowles when McCagnan was very tight with Doug Marone. So then Todd Bowles doesn't win. They fire him. They have McCagnan be part of the coaching search. He hires Adam Gase. Adam Gase then circumvents everybody and convinces Christopher Johnson that McCagnan doesn't know what he's doing. Now Johnson acts after McCagnan spends all of the cap money and makes all of the draft picks, and they bring in Joe Douglas. How is that a recipe for winning? You've never done the right thing. When you don't do the right thing, this is the result well, you're going to have. And also the plan changes, because if you remember, Idzig was hired, and Idzig was told, rebuild. So, and he was also told, you gotta, you got to trade Revis. He rebuilds, he gets picks, then it's all, oh, we, we got to win. So Idzig's got to be out, and we got to replace you with McCagnan. McCagnan's in until Gase looks at it and says, I don't think this is the right guy, and then you're gone. So there's been a lack of conviction and a lack of direction. One minute you're rebuilding, the next minute, oh, i got to go out there and win. So what's going to happen? Now, maybe they took a, a, a really serpentine way to eventually get there, but maybe they found their guys in Gase and Douglas. We're going to have to wait and see. But you have to allow those guys to do what they think is best for the team because neither of the Johnsons are football guys. Woody's out in London, all right? Chris, Christopher is not a football guy. So for better or worse, he hired a general manager and a coach, a coach before the general manager, but they're finally attached at the hip, which is something we've wanted the Jets to do for a long time. Now you got to let them go out and do what they got to do. But just, just look at the timeline that I laid out. A, a, oh, novice, it's a, a novice would realize that what they did was wrong. And I, to this day, think that they undercut Idzik. They never gave him the chance to execute his plan because they got all hot and heavy while well, all of a sudden you have to win. They told him to tear it down, but they made him keep Rex. It didn't make sense. The guy never had his own coach. And then McCagnan didn't have his own coach because rather than having faith in yourself, they hired a committee of people, and that committee said, well... Todd Bowles is the guy. Mike McCagna didn't say it, so it seemed like an uneasy marriage where they got along, and then he ends up getting fired to, and hires a coach. Shows you that Mike McCagna was weak, too. He helped hire a coach that backstabbed him. So everybody keeps asking me, well, why, don't, why, why doesn't Douglas fire Gase? Because Gase got Douglas the job. Yeah, that, we knew that wasn't happening. Yeah, that was not going to happen. Once, once Douglas was the GM, it's a tandem. Although Douglas has way more years on his contract than Gase. Douglas asked for a six-year deal because he knows the toxic mess that he inherited. And knows he needs time. He has to have time.